Thank you, Austin. Good morning and welcome to worship at the Lutheran Church of the Holy Spirit. This is the third Sunday of Lent and the first Sunday after Daylight Savings Time. I think I detect a few 830 worshipers here. It's nice to have the option. By the way, folks, you also need to know, I mean, it's okay to sit north of the baptismal font. I think we have two over here that have chosen to jump the force field, apparently. Uh, feel free at some point uh, in the future, or even today, to migrate this way. A special welcome to all who are joining us on our streaming platform, to those who are worshiping with us for the first time. Uh, if you are a visitor with us, please do introduce yourself to me or to Pastor Camp after the service and accept our invitation to come and worship again. Pastor Tammy is away this week. Rejoicing Spirits will meet in the sanctuary today at 2.30 for worship in celebration of their 15th anniversary here at Holy Spirit. We extend our prayers and best wishes upon this notable anniversary. Members of the congregation are invited to attend the service, however masks are required. Our service of evening prayer will once again be offered this coming Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. in the Fellowship Center. We continue our journey through Lent, reflecting upon the meaning of the paintings of Vincent van Gogh. And this week's painting will be Almond Blossom. There will be a fellowship breakfast this coming Saturday, March 18th at 8.30. This gathering is aimed at young and middle-aged adults. New member information session will be offered next, is it next Sunday. No, it'll be two Sundays, March 26th, beginning at 9.30 in room five on the lower level. Holy Spirit member Victor Schmidt has requested our prayers of consolation on the occasion of his mother's death. Nancy Schmidt Harper died last evening. Funeral arrangements are not yet complete at this time. Also want to make you aware that the congregation has a great number of devotional books available for your consideration. They are on tables in the back of the sanctuary. Some have just weeks left in their March offering. Others are for the entire duration of Lent, others are for the coming months, so please do help yourself to your devotional book or take one to someone who would appreciate it. That concludes my welcome and announcements. Would you please stand for the confession and forgiveness? <laughs> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who looks upon us in compassion, forgives our sins, and heals our lives. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Have mercy, O God, against yes, you, you, you will love me have sin. sin. In your compassion, cleanse us from our sin and take away our guilt. Create in us a new heart and give us a steadfast spirit. Do not cast us away. But fill us with your Holy Spirit and restore your joy within us. Amen. As tender as parent to child, so deep is God's compassion for you. As high as heaven is above earth, so vast is God's love for you. As far as east is from the west, so far God removed your sin from you, renewing your life through Jesus Christ. Blessed be God who crowns us with mercy and love. Blessed be God forever.
Let us pray. Holy One, we yearn to draw near as we arrive in this place. We come to calm our hearts, soothe our fears, and deepen our faith. As the Samaritan woman before us, help us draw cool water from the well of your love, and help us lead with the living water of belief to the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from the book of Exodus. A reading from Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Raphidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do for these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? Word of God, word of hope. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Romans, a reading from Romans. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our afflictions, knowing that affliction produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely, therefore, since we have now been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Word of God, word of hope. Thanks be to God. <laughs> I'm going to invite you to be seated. Uh, this particular gospel is extremely long. The Holy Gospel according to John. Let your steadfast love come to us, O Lord. Save us as you promised. We will trust in your word. So he came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, 
And Jesus, tired by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. The disciples had gone into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. And the woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and this well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I ne may never be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. And the woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is Jerusalem. And Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. The hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as to those who worship Him. God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to Him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When He comes, He will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am He the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman. But no one said, what do you want or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her jar, her water jar, and went back to the city. And she said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Many Samaritans came from that city, believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with him, them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world, the Gospel of the Lord. Inspired by your word, we offer you our praise. Would you pray with me, please? Lord God, our way, our life, our light, keep us forever faithful, trusting solely in your word. Amen. Today's rather lengthy gospel message between Jesus and the woman at the well is the longest recorded conversation that Jesus has with anyone in any of the four Gospels. The interesting thing here is that Jesus is engaged in a lengthy discourse with a Samaritan woman. 
And yet, on at least two other occasions, Jesus elevates the role of one who is on the fringe of polite society to a level of critical importance. In Luke's story, the Gospel of Luke and the ten lepers who sought cleansing from Jesus, all ten were cleansed, but you might recall the story that only one returned to give thanks, and that one was a man of Samaria. And of course, you are all most likely familiar with Jesus and the story of the good. There you are. Samaritans, however, were not well thought of by Jews of Jesus' time. And I'd like to explore some of the history as to why that was so. You see, tensions between the population of Samaria and the Jews surrounding Jerusalem had its origin hundreds of years before the time of Christ. When the Israelites came out of Egypt and occupied the Promised Land, the territories they occupied were allotted to the, 12, to the respective 12 tribes. So you had the land of Judah, you had the land of Naphtali, you had the land of Dan, and so on and so forth. These tribal territories were later united under the reign of the Jewish kings, Saul, David, Solomon to be specific. Civil discontent followed the reign of Solomon, and it led to a division of the kingdom, resulting in the kingdom of Israel in the north and Judah in the south. Now, just for some sense of scale, I have found it helpful that one, one is thinking of the size and proportions of the Holy Land, that an effective comparison is to consider the size and proportions of the state of New Jersey. You all heard of New Jersey? They're about the same size. Not exactly the same size, but as they used to say when I worked in manufacturing, close enough for government work. Approximately eight centuries before Christ, the Assyrian Empire to the northeast was on the rise and eventually invaded and assumed the kingdom of Israel. The area was depopulated. The educated, the ruling, and religious classes were carried off into captivity near the capital city of Nineveh. The Jews who remained set their own place of worship, because not all the population was carried off, but their place of worship was not Jerusalem. Moreover, it was believed that they incorporated pagan rituals introduced by their Assyrian overseers. About 150 years later, the Babylonian Empire eclipsed the Assyrian Empire, and the southern kingdom of Judah was invaded, occupied, and its leadership in economics, political, and religious life was likewise carried into exile. Jerusalem and the temple were destroyed. The exiles were eventually allowed to return by the Persians, who had overtaken the Babylonians. You all keeping up with this? I haven't mentioned the Seleucids, the Ptolemies, and the Hellenistics, as well as the Romans, who were all later. This took place about four to five centuries before Christ. Jerusalem was reestablished, the temple was rebuilt. So what results is a Jewish population in the south focused on worship at Jerusalem, and another group in the north worshiping around Mount Gerizim in the province known as Samaria. The 30 by 40 mile area west of the Sea of Galilee, overlooking and including the travel route from Galilee in the north to Jerusalem in the south. That explains Jesus' route of travel. My recollection is that the Jews who remained in the north during the period of exile 
were shunned by those returning from exile because of their religious focus at Mount Gerizim and not Jerusalem, and because of their style of worship that had come to incorporate pagan influences. And even though the two groups were religious cousins with a common heritage, they chose not to interact. That is some of the background to Jesus' interaction with the Samaritan woman at the well, an interaction that Jesus initiates. This is a conversation with a Samaritan, socially uncomfortable in and of itself. This Samaritan happens to be a woman, and that's a whole other sermon. Over the years, this Samaritan woman has been given an unsavory reputation by church tradition and church leaders. She's had five husbands and now lives with a man. We do not know whether husbands died or there was a divorce over which she probably had no control. We do know that in that culture and practice, a woman almost always needed to depend on a man for survival. A point is made by some commentators that her appearance for water at noon is a sign she's not welcome in polite society, where water is generally retrieved by all first thing in the morning. That somehow or other, she's done something to be shunned from the early morning water retrieval that she is therefore a person of low moral character. Well, maybe she just ran out of water and had to go back. Despite or because of her life situation, Jesus enters into conversation, invites her belief in him as the provider of living, life-giving water, the Messiah, and then Contrary to all social expectation, he stays with them two more days. Imagine. Breaking down barriers seems to be what Jesus is all about. We, like the Samaritan woman, are recipients of God's living water through Jesus Christ. We believe, we confess, and we embrace through faith that this is so. We are bathed in God's promise of life and love eternal through the waters of baptism. We are nourished frequently at the Lord's table. We have not earned any of this on our own. All is a gift of faith. Recall our Romans passage from this morning. We, in turn, and in response to the gift of life, living water, the gift of faith, offer an open invitation to come to worship, welcoming those who believe and embrace Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But our response needs to go beyond invitational as we try to lead lives that reflect the love and promise the living water has given. And those opportunities to respond are manifold. One only needs to look at our own holy happenings, a part of your worship bulletin. One only needs to look there to find even some opportunities. There are many of them. For instance, we're encouraged to utilize this season of Lent to make extra contributions to the ELCA World Hunger Appeal. The inflow of money to this ministry over the years has not only led to the feeding of millions worldwide, but has also taught millions more to feed themselves. And in keeping with today's gospel theme, the World Hunger Appeal has developed many programs for securing and maintaining clean water supplies, as well as irrigation and sanitation programs in still developing countries. Close to home and still within the theme of the season of Lent, 
Emmaus High School Angel Network is collecting pantry staples for our neighbors in need through March 24th of this month, and that there is a special need for liquid laundry detergent. To which I will add Holy Spirit's new ministry about to start, involvement with Six Street Shelters Adopt an Apartment Program, as this is an opportunity to push back against housing insecurity and the specter of homelessness for those whose lives have taken a toll. This is accomplished by providing resources and support on the road to renewed self-sufficiency and independence. And let us not forget all the quilts that you see before you today, the efforts of a large group of Holy Spirit volunteers whose living water faith will soon surround many in our community with caring and warmth. The living water, which is Christ, is ours as a gift through faith. It is not a matter of earning, heritage, tradition, orthodoxy, or religious snobbery. It is a gift to be enjoyed. It is a gift to be shared. Thanks be to God for the living water and the gift of faith. Amen.
Let's confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for our fellowship in the household of faith with all who have been baptized into your name. Keep us faithful to our baptism, and so make us ready for that day when the whole creation shall be made perfect in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. In Christ Jesus, we meet the God who knows our weakness and bears the wounds of the world. Therefore, let us be bold as we pray, trusting that God draws near to those in any kind of need. We pray for your church. Bless partnerships with other Christians in interreligious dialogue. Strengthen our combined witness for the sake of the gospel, that all experience your life-giving love. God, our rock and salvation. Receive our prayer. We pray for the universe. All creation teems with life from the depths of the earth and seas to the skies above. Fill us with awe and reverence for the diversity and preservation of life. Bless partnerships with other Christians and interreligious dialogue. God, our rock and salvation. Receive our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world. Topple the dividing walls that separate us from our neighbors. Form us into your beloved community where diversity of gender, race, language, ability, and ethnic origin is celebrated and affirmed. God, our rock and salvation. Receive our prayer. We pray for those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. Be present with all who are lonely and give courage to all who are afraid. Comfort those who live with chronic illness or other sicknesses, especially Barbara, Tara, Marie, Tom, Rich, Gwen, Jane, Larry, Nancy, Joe, Sandy, Gordon, Penelope, Victoria, Fred, Laverne, Lester, Sharon, Grayson, Jim, Max, Anne, Tim, Val, Fred, Pete, Sue, Wilma, Jen, Josh, Elaine, Don, and Judith in times of sam sorrow for the family and friends of Anthony and Nancy. Give them your living waters always, God our rock and salvation. We give thanks for the lives of all your saints, their hope in you sustained lives of faith and service. Encourage us with the hope they shared in you, God our rock and salvation. We pray for the Rejoicing Spirits Congregation, who this day celebrate their 15th year of worship and ministry here at Holy Spirit. You have been their firm foundation all these years, and your love is felt by everyone who has participated. Thank you for their witness, faithfulness, and Christ-like presence. God, our rock and salvation. Receive our prayer. God of all compassion, gather our prayers in your mercy and grant to us what you know we need, that we may walk in the life and peace of your spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our hope and salvation. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace with one another.
As always, we are ever thankful for the ways that you support our ministries here as we give back to God from the many ways God has blessed us. As you consider ways to volunteer, to give of yourself, and to give your gifts, your financial gifts, remind you that if you've brought an offering today, there are plates in the back of the sanctuary at the rear doors, um, as well as uh, giving online or at our giving kiosk. And if you have ways that you would like to support our ministry by volunteering, please let us know. We are always glad to have you. Now we will bless these beautiful quilts as they go out to support the many community ministries to which they are donated. I ask you to reach out if one is close and put your hands on one of those quilts as we bless them. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our God, maker of all things, you have blessed Stitch and Chat with so many gifts, a good eye for color, the ability to make fine stitches, the skills to develop ever new and exciting patterns. Now we offer the fruits of their labor to you. We dedicate these quilts to your service, trusting that your love will go to do the happy ministries, paid out on the White House, six street shelter, and the kindness project, where each quilt is sent, making it more than just a piece of material collection of items, making each piece you have created an expression of love and care. There is no way for us to imagine the power and effect an act of love can have on a person's life. How you can use something as small as a quilt to radiate your love from us to the world. Make it easy to use in your service and become blessings for all who can see them. Lord, we know that all we possess comes from your loving hand. Give us grace to honor you with all our being. Draw our hearts to you, guide our minds, fill our imaginations, control our wills, so that we may be wholly yours. Use us always to your glory and the welfare of people everywhere. It is 
comments on our communion this morning. As we have been for the past few weeks, you will be invited to come forward. First, our Zoom worshipers and those who choose to remain in their seats will be communed, followed by the choir who will come forward. Then ushers will direct you forward down the center aisle where you receive a wafer from one of the pastors, a cup of juice from one of the communion assistants, at which time you can choose to spend a brief time in prayer at the rail or to return to your seats. There are receptacles uh, here on the sides for you to put your empty uh, cups. Please rise. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Protector God, we hear your voice beckoning us to be your hands and your feet in the world. Show us a way through the wilderness of life with knapsacks filled with blessings and vessels of living water for a hurting world. Receive these offerings of bread, wine, and money, that they may be for others the blessings we have received from your hands. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Come and receive Jesus, our strength in the wilderness.
Body of Christ. And since I forgot at the beginning, for those who have remained seated and for our Zoom worshipers, this is the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Embody God at your table. We have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Bless us, O God. As we walk into the desert, send your angels to travel with us. Remind us that you are always here. Bless us, O God. As we journey towards Easter, Give us companions on the way, both strangers and friends. God of beauty and welcome, Jesus calls us spirit of truth and challenge. Bless us this day and always keep us in love. Amen.
Christ is with you on your journey. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 